Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. Today we're talking about subtypes, your personal secret way of developing yourself and using your cognitive functions. So subtypes will be a theoretical model that you can use to understand personal preferences within your personality. And the subtypes are also great for understanding internal conflict. And that is when we struggle to prioritize between things that we hold to be equally valuable. So imagine this, human mind has four cognitive functions that they determine to be of equal value or equal merit in its own we see them all as important, we see them all as positive, and they all play key roles to balance and health and well-being. So a subtype is when you start choosing one of these values above the others. You start saying, yeah, I like all of them, but this one is currently more important to me, or I need to currently prioritize on this one, or I might need to set this one aside in favor of this one. So what you're doing is you're making a priority in your life and sometimes that's necessary if you are unable to pursue all values at the same time. But ideally for the sake of balance internally we should be looking to reinforce all our values and proactively work towards all of them because otherwise what you will feel is some kind of imbalance in yourself where you feel even though you're getting forward in life that you lack or miss something. So there are four important subtypes to talk about and it is the observer subtypes, the decider subtypes, the reviewer subtypes and the actor subtypes. So those are the most important to remember. You want to just note what these mean and you want to first and all First and foremost, recognize that the observer is somebody who has a very strong preference for their observation function or for their perception. So they engage in mainly perceiving the world and experiencing it and defining it and understanding what it is and how it works and what it looks like. So the observer's core priority is mapping things down. Where, what the hell, I'm born into this world. What is this place? What does it mean? What is hidden here? How do I understand it? What, how do I define it? Where am I? It is that perplexion with uh, where we are right now and that desire to understand. And that desire to understand, that curiosity is very integral to moving forward in life. We need to understand our surroundings to have balance and to feel at peace with where we are. When we don't understand something, we feel anxious about it. We feel anxious about not knowing, not understanding how it works, not knowing what could happen, how it could happen. Not, not being able to deal with these uncertainties and these insecurities can be very difficult. So it makes sense then that there are certain observer types that have their observer function as their flow function and what this means is uh, this is your engine observation is your engine it's what you're constantly using to bring yourself forward in life you're constantly seeking more understanding you're constantly trying to learn more you're constantly looking for more information that's the observer function over and over and over so what it is is it is the pursuit of understanding and awareness and it pairs together with them the actor function. The actor function works well, very well in pair with the observer function because both the actor function, it is what allows us to make decisions about what we see. It allows us to speculate, it allows us to weigh, it allows us to hold up different things, different possibilities, and it allows us to, in the moment, make calls for what to get, when, at what time, you know, it allows us to manage time, it allows us to move forward, it allows for real-time decision-making, and be it allows for, in particular, behavior. So that is always feeding the observer type with information. It's, the goal, the priority here is just get me as much information as possible, act in a way that will get me information, do things that will give me information, do things that will teach me. The Every action, every part of the behavior of the observer type is just purely meant to support you with information. It's experimental in its nature. The observer type experiments. Their behavior is to try things out, to test. It is not coming from a position of flow. It's not a flow actor. It is 
the inspired actor. An inspired actor does just to grow, just to experience, not because they think this behavior is good or because they like acting like this or because they think this is and feels fair and balanced and in tune with them. So the observer works in par with the inspired actor but it has a steering function aside of it and that's the reviewer. The reviewer somewhat blocks the information gathering but it keeps you in check. The goal of this function is to keep you in check. It is to make sure that you are somehow staying intact and balanced and that you are keeping out for issues as you're constantly absorbing information. The steer, the reviewer is meant to be there as a kind of checkup for does this really add up? Is this really true? Can I really trust this? So the goal of the steer is to act as kind of a mentor to you, to allow you to double check what you're doing to know if how it works. More importantly, the break decider. The break decider is uh, fulfills the purpose of making sure we don't do anything stupid. The goal is to get information and ideally you want to get as much information as possible before you make a decision. So you want to and you prefer to keep brainstorming, keep learning, keep seeking out, testing, experimenting, formulating, defining, but you want to avoid making decisions. The break decider is always saying, wait, not yet, not yet, not yet, no decision right now. Can we make a decision later? Can we maybe postpone this? Can we maybe do it at another time? Can we prolong the deadline? The goal of the break decider is to keep us from doing something until we have gotten as much information as possible. So the observer type struggles to make decisions and to work on goals and to work towards ambitions and to work on projects and to finish ahead of deadlines because the observer function is constantly trying to fill it up with more information. So that's the observer type and it's best contrasted with the decider type. The decider type has a flow decider function. So what you're going to see is goals, projects, decisions and also the core priority of seeking to maintain these projects, maintain these goals, maintain these deadlines to produce as much as you said you would at the time you would in the way you would. So the goal of the flow decider is make as many decisions as possible, see decisions through, make sure they are done accordingly. So the actor is the steer, the behavior is mainly done to make sure that you are constantly adjusting to your decisions and that you are constantly altering your actions and behavior to be consistent with your beliefs and your decisions and your goals. The reviewer serves the purpose of inspiration. It's serves the purpose of feedback on your decisions. Did I make the right call? Was this a good call? What was the problem with this call? And if there was a problem with this call, how could I adjust? How, what can I do then? How can I take care of this? How can I make sure I deal with the consequences? So the reviewer just fills you up with this kind of, uh, this critical voice that just urges you on. Take care of that. Make sure you don't do that mistake. Make sure you take care of and consider this perspective. So it's mainly just that purpose of inspiration as in giving you information and giving you perspective in your decision making. The decider type has a break observer function. What does that mean? Well, it means that you avoid thinking about certain things. You don't want to think about certain things. You don't want to consider certain facts or certain, certain information because you consider it a threat to your decisions. You don't want to stop or research this because it sounds like a distraction to your goals or your ambitions. You don't want to hear certain things because it could potentially go against your plans or what your aims are. So there is an avoidance, there is a desire to say break, stop, wait before you think about something new or research a new topic until you have finished what you are currently working on. After the decider, let's talk about the reviewer. The reviewer has the reviewer function as the flow function. So perspective is key here. Evaluating, thinking about how you feel about something, 
noting down and scoring your environment. What do I like about it? What do I dislike about it? What's good about it? What's bad about it? So that constant pursuit to make sense of and to evaluate and to review our situation. Am I happy? Am I doing the right thing? Am I a good person? Am I living in tune with my morals? What are my morals? What do I care about? What do I don't care about? So the reviewer is the flow function. It's a part of their natural balance. You're trying to constantly act in accordance with your values and your ethics. You're constantly making sure and reminding yourself of what these ethics are. The decider function is the inspirational function here. So it's the aspiration. It's the staying true to who you are. It's making decisions in, true, in tune with who you are. It's making sure that you keep standing up for yourself, that you keep putting yourself forward, that you work on your projects and your goals, that you do and that you see through things that you know are important. It's constantly that reminding voice of let's also do that and let's consider this and let's take care of that as well because that's important to you, right? So that's how the, the reviewer responds to these things, because that's important to you, right? That's that reminder of, you need to do this, right? You're, you know you have to do this. You're, you're in tune with this. So it's always there as a kind of inspiration and it's a kind of an urging instinct. The inspirational function is like an urge, like you need to take care of this. This is important. You know this is important. The steer is a little bit different in the sense that the steer is like uh, the kind of thing that keeps you in check. It's the observation function keeps the reviewer in check. You have to constantly make sure that your ethics and your feelings and your values are actually based on something that you are experiencing, that it has to match up with what you are thinking about or where you live or who you are in your current situation. It can't be baseless. It can't be just about anything. It has to. You have to constantly ground your judgment and relate it to the situation and to your experience. The reviewer uses the observer function to steer themselves and to keep their evaluation grounded and focused on actual experience and actual theories and actual information. The break function, the actor here, is kind of like what the reviewer avoids. The reviewer avoids action and avoids behavior because it is afraid of acting against its values. What if I make a mistake? What if I do something stupid? What if I say something I shouldn't? That All those considerations are the sign of having a break actor function. Being afraid of making social errors and acting in a bad way or getting criticism for what you're doing, that's all key to the reviewer types. The reviewer types fear doing bad things or making mistakes. So this can cause them to avoid taking action, can keep them in a state of evaluating this is who I am while avoiding doing things that might potentially go against who they are. So they are afraid of being incongruent with their ethics and their values. Finally, the actor function. The actor has actions as its flow, its engine. So always doing something, keeping yourself busy, making sure things are happening, making sure there are always things to do. The actor type wants to constantly have things to do. That's the core goal here. The break says avoid thinking about the consequences of your actions. Don't stop because then you start thinking about like uh, things you should have done better and you start uh, worrying that you did a mistake and you start feeling like maybe I potentially said something I shouldn't have. The flow actor wants to keep going, keep acting, keep behaving, keep doing because if you're doing things, you're making up for the fact that you're not thinking about what you're doing or how you're doing it. So the actor might even be prone to defending themselves by saying, well, at least I did something. Sure, it was wrong, but at least I did something. That's a common thing for an actor to say. And the actor is fed on by the observer function. The observer function is always like giving it more information. Have you checked out this? Have you heard about that? Did you know about this? It's always like this reminder clock, like alarm clock on your phone, like, oh, so that's happening later. Oh, so now this happened. Oh, so there is this going on as well. 
So the actor is always filled by this information from the inspirational function. And it's like, it's not from flow because it's not from self. It's not your observations. It's not your experiences. It's other people's experiences. A good example of the flow observer, of the inspired observer is it's focused on just information, not your information, but any information. So it's information in hyperdrive, perception functions in hyperdrive. Perhaps uh, the bar should be higher than the flow actor to explain what I'm saying. The steering function in the actor is the decider. The decider says, uh, are you reaching your goals? You're doing a lot, but are you reaching your goals? Okay, so you have a lot going on, but are you finishing your homework? Are you in time for your appointment? Are you aware of this project? Have you thought about, have you made this plan? Have you planned this? Have you thought this through? So the steer decider is always like this kind of critical parent, this mentor that goes, so how is that project going? I hear you have a lot going on, but how is that project you said you would do going? So they're always keeping you in check by telling you and reminding you of things you need to do. So if the inspired observer is this kind of uh, carrot that's going like, Oh, I could try this and I could check out that and I could go to that movie. <laughs> the decider is that uh, like calendar appointment that from the doctor like, oh, I have to do that. And uh, then uh, work and then, oh, it's that it's that reminder of things we perceive as must that we don't really want to do. So these are the four subtypes, the observer, the decider, the reviewer, the act actor. Hearing this video, which subtype do you think you are? Which one speaks the most to you? Do check out my article on ericdor.com slash subtypes. And if you like this video, visit patreon.com slash ericdor and leave a donation. Thanks everyone for joining up and hope to see you all in my next video.